Welcome to this tutorial mini-series on Ramda.js, the JavaScript library Ramda, where we will go through all of the functions that currently exist in the Ramda.js library now. If you haven't already seen my video on introduction to Ramda.js, I would highly suggest that you check that out first, because in that video we actually explore a concrete scenario and make use of a few different functions in order to solve a concrete problem. So I think that serves as a good introductory video. But anyways, let's jump into this. We are essentially now, as I said before, going to go through all of the functions here in, in the Ramda library. And as you can see, I'm now at the documentation page here. There are quite a lot of them, so we better get started. So let's just start from the top here. We have this underscore 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 function. So how we reach this, oh, actually, sorry, let me start in this end. I, I, I'm just here in this folder where I've got a main JS file, which actually is empty, I believe. Yeah, which is empty. And then uh, I've got this node modules folder because we've installed Ramda, but that's also the only module that we've installed. And as you can see, when we look at package JSON here, you can see that we've only installed Ramda as a dependency. But anyways, so let me clear that up. Let's open Vim. Let's open the main file. And let's just map a keystroke to a running node on uh, this file. And let's just make sure that works by saying console log hello. We can see that that works. And then let's also just start by actually requiring uh, Ramda. That seems to work. So let's do console log r. Uh, we can see that we now have all of the functions of the Ramda library. So that means we can now get started in actually uh, running these functions. So let's now start from the top here. So the first thing that we can see here is this underscore underscore thing. So what we can do is we can say r dot underscore underscore. Now, what does this do? So let's read this. It says, it's a special placeholder value used to specify gaps within curried functions, allowing partial application of any combination of arguments regardless of their positions. If g is a curried ternary function and underscore is uh, r underscore underscore, right? So here they're just saying, okay, in order to not have to write r dot underscore underscore here in these examples, they'll just say underscore. So when they say underscore here, they mean r dot underscore underscore. Uh, then the following are equivalent. So what they're saying is that this whole list of different expressions, these would all uh, be the same thing. This would equate to the same value. So if G is a function that takes an X then, and then a Y and then a Z, right? So one argument, a second argument and a third argument, then using uh, this underscore or R dot underscore underscore, you can vary the order in which you apply these arguments. And what they mean with ternary here when they say if g is a curry ternary function is essentially just a function that takes three arguments, the, the first argument, the second argument, and the third argument. And so currying is this notion of uh, turning a function that takes more than one argument into a series of functions that each take a single argument. If you're not already familiar with currying, you'll definitely get a feel for it as we uh, walk through this, this tutorial. But essentially, if this function g takes three arguments, then instead of applying all of these three arguments at the same time, if you curry g, you will produce a new function, or, or sorry, I should say, I mean, g here, they say is the curried ternary function. So if the underlying function is f and g is this curry curried version of f, then uh, instead of applying, uh, let me actually write this here. So, uh, so if we have f, which takes uh, argument x, y, and z, let's say, and it just adds up x plus y plus uh, z, uh, then if we would curry and, and only allow one way of, of invoking this function, we could produce a function g that first takes an x, and then returns a new function that takes a y, and then returns a new function that uh, takes a z and then uh, invokes s x plus y uh, plus z. So this is in some sense a curried version of this f function. But of course, now we sort of hard coded this curried version of f. But clearly, when you curry in a language that doesn't natively support currying, such as JavaScript, yet at least, then we construct a curry function that we can pass any function to. And that, that this curry function will return us a curried version of that function. But anyways, I mean, let's, let's not dig down into this too far. I, I think you'll see how this plays out when, when we sort of use the different functions. Essentially, I mean, what they they say here, if we, if we just copy this stuff from the documentation here and paste it in so I can actually edit it here, uh, you can see that well, I should say something about currying first. So all, all Ramda functions are auto-curried by, by default. So that means that if you have this function, 
uh, where g is a, a ramda function. So if so if it's add, for example, now add takes two arguments. But if you have something that takes three arguments, then saying g and and running and applying it to one and two and three is the same as applying it to one and then applying it to two and then applying it to three. So they didn't include that in the list here, but that's probably because they wanted to show uh, this underscore notation. Probably if we look here in the docs, we can see that we have currying. Yeah, so here, here we actually have exactly this example, right? So if f is a ternary function, in other words, if f is a function that takes three arg arguments and g is r dot curry applied to f, then these following are equivalent. So let's actually look at that instead. So it's probably easier if we start with currying. So sorry about that. I mean, you'll notice we'll have to jump a bit back and forth in the documentation because sometimes there are sort of interdependencies. I mean, clearly the, the functions here in the list are in alphabetical order. So we'll go through them in alphabetical order, but sometimes we'll have to jump back and forth in order to sort of make the concepts click together. But yeah, so what they're saying is that in Ramda, all of these are uh, essentially the same thing or, or they are, they yield the same same result. So these are all different ways of expressing the same thing. G is a curried version of F, where F in this case is a ternary function, a function that takes three arguments. And in this curried version, you can choose to apply uh, either all of the arguments at the same time, or two of them, and then the last one, or one, and then two, or each of them individually. So in other words, in this case, it's very explicit that we first uh, apply one argument to G, get a function back, and then apply two to that function, and then apply three to that function. But this is just normal old currying, so you might already be familiar with this. Uh, let's jump back here. So we were at uh, underscore underscore here, and then let's look at these examples. So what they're saying then is that, well, okay, currying works this way. Currying works in the sense that you can partially apply the initial arguments, or you can partially apply consecutive arguments starting from the first argument and, and postpone applying the later arguments. The problem with that is, that, of course, that it's linear. You, you apply the first one, and then you apply the second one, and then you apply the third one. But this is why we have uh, underscore here, or r dot underscore underscore, because then we can say, well, actually, I would like to apply the second argument, say, first, and then leave, leave the last argument for, for last. Let me show an example. This is probably easier to think of it this way. So we have r dot add, for example. So if we take add 10 and 20, right? So let me say console.log and then just log this. Uh, so we can see that we get 30 back, of course, because add is a function that adds uh, an x and a y. So the, the first argument and the second argument. But what we were saying is that you could also say that, okay, this is a curried version, so you could, you could run it like this. And that gives us the same the same result. But we could also save this in, in a function. So we save it in a function f, and in f we save uh, adding with 10. And then we can console log f applied to 20. This gives us the same result as well. And this is really the power of curring. You can save it into a function. So if, if we have this add function, and we say add one, for example, then this would be an excellent candidate for an increment function. So this is essentially, so we could call it inc, right? So if we say inc, inc 10, for example, right, we would get 12 because we're incrementing 10 two times. But back to currying. So the thing is then that this add function, now we're partially applying the first argument. We're partially applying the, the, the one here, but we could also pass r uh, dot underscore underscore and then one now we would be partially applying the second argument and we're saying okay I want to wait with this first argument that's the thing I want to apply afterwards so let's see if this works yeah this works this gives us the same result it also gives us 12 now clearly this gave us the same thing because adding I mean it doesn't matter whether you add uh, one to two or two to one but if we have something where it does matter let's see if there's a I mean there should be a subtract method right subtract so so 10 minus 8 it gives us two right so if we change add to subtract right uh, let's just call this decrement instead and we'll change a so we'll call decrement on 10 here. Let's just see what we get and then think about it later. So we get nine here, right? So we passed 10 and we passed one here. So what we're doing is that we're saying, I don't know the first argument yet, but I know the second argument. So let's think about this. If we read the definition, the de definition says X minus Y gives us the result. So what we are saying is that we want to divide, uh, uh, we want to subtract one from an unknown number. And this is the number 
we are uh, waiting with applying. This is the number we want to apply later, right? We are applying 10 and we are saying decrement by one. So actually dec was a, was a very good name for, for this function. So if we decrement twice, we'll end up at eight, right? And of course, if we didn't do this, if we just passed one here, you would see the decrement, of course, behaves differently because now we actually, well, this was a bit odd, wait, let's think about it. So here we're saying subtract from one and I will want to add the number that we're subtracting later. So we're saying decrement 10 from that. Ah, oh, so maybe, oh, sorry, the, the, the problem is double negation here. So I decremented twice. So let's, let's remove this uh, second uh, decrement. Well, Yikes. Let's remove the second uh, decrement, I guess is the term. Let's run this again. Here, so this makes a lot more sense. Now you can see that we get minus nine. I mean, clearly it made sense in the other direction as well, or in the other example as well, but it was more difficult to think about. So now we get minus nine because we are saying, when we are not making use of this uh, r dot underscore underscore, we are saying, I want to subtract from one. I don't know how much I want to subtract from one, but I know that I want to subtract from one. So this, this doesn't make any sense anymore to call this decrement, right? Like maybe we would call it uh, subtract from one. I mean, we can probably figure out a, a more sensible name for this, but hopefully you can see then that if we rename this back to, uh, to deck, right? That, and we call this deck uh, one and we call this deck two. And then here I, I use uh, r dot underscore underscore and, and put one here. And then let's just console log both of these with 10. I'll remove this in the end. Oh. And we'll save and run this. So now you can see that we get negative nine and we get nine. And so hopefully you can see that these behave differently. Uh, this using this r dot underscore underscore, we can choose which which arguments we know at the time of constructing the function or, or at the time of calling the function and which arguments we want to wait with until later. But if, if we don't make use of r dot underscore underscore, we simply partially apply the first one and then the next one and then the next one and so forth. Of course, I guess this would be equivalent to also saying r dot underscore underscore here. Yeah, I mean, negative nine and nine, and previously we had negative nine and nine. So I mean, that would be the same thing, of course. So uh, in some sense, you could think of it this way. This is uh, implicit when we're not using r dot underscore underscore. So uh, that's sort of default behavior. So anyways, I hope that makes sense. That was, that was the first one. If it doesn't, and if you haven't seen currying before, don't worry about it too much. I think as we go through this, you'll get the hang of it because it's such an inherent part or such an important part of generally functional programming, but definitely Ramda. Let's move on to the next one. So the first one is add. Okay, so <laughs> clearly this, this we've looked at, right? So add, let's actually read the, the type definitions as well. Like I'll, I'll try my best to read most of them Sometimes I'm just completely confused by them, but, but I'll try my best. So add here is a function that takes a number, returns a new function that takes a number, and when you supply that number, you get a number back. And if you think about this in a non-curried way, you have two arguments where both of these arguments are numbers, and then you get a number back, right? So we say r dot add, we pass the first one, then we pass the second one, and we get the sum of these two numbers. And of course, you can call them also in this in this curried style. I think, I mean, this we just looked at, so there's no need to spend a lot of time here, but we can just say add 10 and 20, and we get 30. And they say also c subtract, right? Uh, but let's look at the next one. So now swoosh suddenly it gets like significantly more complicated so here we have this function called add index let's read the text first so it says create a new list iteration function from an existing one by adding two new parameters to its callback function the current index and the entire list 